developed by Honey Slug and Santa Monica Studio and published by Sony Computer Entertainment, Hohokam is a very interesting and unique little game. Hohokam is not a traditional video game where goals are set and imposed on the player. It's a laid-back game about losing yourself in an environment where the player is free to do whatever they want in whatever order they wish. Call it a virtual playground or an interactive piece of art, if you will. And while playing and researching the game, it became quite clear to me that this game is very divisive among its community. Some players find it fun and relaxing, while others find it ridiculously obtuse. Some enjoy the aspect of discovery, others feel it's too confusing that nothing is explained outright and that there's no clear motivation, no real point to anything. The game is, in a sense, abstract or ambiguous, but it's meant to be an experience unlike you've ever had before. There's no gratuitous violence here, no blood, no high action set pieces. Dialogue is noticeably absent. There are no tutorials to explain anything, and furthermore, no clear path to follow. So what exactly is there, you ask? Creativity? Discovery? Peaceful interaction? Perhaps even enlightenment? I mean, who's to say what a video game should be anyway? Isn't escapism the ultimate goal of any video game? To whisk us away from our reality and have us engage in a different world than our own? It is here that Hohokam shines brightly. And after a few minutes, hours, or days of playing, you may very well find yourself completely charmed and never wanting to come back home again. Your journey begins in a world dominated by darkness. A void. You are a serpentine creature called a long mover. As you move and frolic about, you begin to notice other similar creatures just like you, seemingly trapped as they fly around and around with no sense of purpose. Making contact with them, they escape from their hypnotized trance and join you. Freeing each of them gives way to an odd-looking dial. As you fly around it, it begins to open a series of portals into different worlds, and suddenly all of your friends leave you, one flying into each portal. Alone in the darkness again, you set out to find them, one world at a time. The long mover is always moving forward. You can move left or right, which will also make you change color. Cool. And you can speed up or slow down. As you explore each world, your goal is to interact with the environment and its inhabitants and locate one of your friends and figure out how to set them free. As you fly around in each environment, subtle things may happen all around you. The inhabitants may jump on your back, perhaps hoping to be taken along somewhere, or you may find yourself helping creatures that need to keep the factory production moving along, for example. There is a real cause and effect pattern happening at all times, and the game truly rewards you for paying attention, which isn't always possible as you are hit with ambient sounds, music, and colors at every turn. It truly becomes synesthesia at times. You'll constantly feel a sense of discovery as you fly around figuring out things on your own. And yes, it definitely can feel obtuse at times, which could eventually lead the player into frustration. But if you remain patient and simply allow yourself to be immersed in its design, let go of the feeling of needing to do something and just fly around, the game usually rewards you for it. 
It's important to remember that you're flying around a world that's completely different from your own. Forget what you know, what you think you know, and just let your instincts guide you. Hohokam's graphic design was created by Richard Hogg and Ricky Haggett and his team at Honey Slug. Richard's designs inspired the overall look of the game, where he would design creatures and environments and Ricky and his team would animate and make them work as part of a video game. Richard Hogg explains. Yeah, we come at it from both directions, so I would go away and draw stuff, not really knowing what the gameplay um, mechanic or whatever was for that stuff. I would just draw some stuff and send it to Ricky and go, here's some stuff for this bit of the game. And Ricky would like try and figure out what the gameplay would be. And then at the same time, the opposite would happen where he would make he would make prototypes of gameplay using very bad art, just shapes, you know, instead of art. And then he would send those to me and say, what, what should this look like? So we sort of tried to work both ways. We try and sort of let the ideas come from either direction and then meet, try and meet, meet each other in the middle the whole time, I guess. Richard's art style is really attractive. Colorful and vibrant, it's interesting to fly from one world into the next, wondering what awaits you on the other side of each portal. A true feast for the senses, you may find yourself bouncing around uncontrollably through a thick landscape of pop nuts, bumping into sea sponges containing large amounts of water you can then swim through, dunking yourself in red wine delivering glasses of the stuff to celebratory wedding guests, or even getting lost in hordes of flying drones. If that's indeed what they are. If it all looks and sounds weird, well, that's because it is. But that's refreshing because it adds to Hohokam's charm and originality. I'd say we weren't that interested in story. We were more interested in just creating interesting environments to explore. But at some point during development, we had these ideas of like, oh, maybe it's like a big game of hide and seek. Even though it's like a weird, abstract 2D world, in a, in a funny kind of way, I wanted it to feel more like a real place than most games do. And it does. Every world feels interesting and lived in. From the pottery world, where you compulsively break every jar, angering the potter who's just trying to work, to the factory setting where three elephant looking creatures called harvesters are sucking up guano so production can continue and the boss can be happy. Or in this case, dead. Hohokam uses licensed music from Ghostly International, a label that assigned popular artists such as Calm Trues and Tycho. While in development, the team had a very strong idea of what kind of music they wanted in their game. Richard Hogg explains. You know, before we were even talking to Sony, we had a playlist of the sort of music that we saw being in our game. And quite a lot of the music on that was from that record label. Sony Santa Monica have made it possible for us to collaborate with that record label and, and do, a, do a thing with them. Some of the artists had like unreleased stuff that we that, that fitted that we could use. Others made bespoke stuff for it. The end product is truly amazing. Every song complements the level design by giving it a pulse, a true identity, and it further drives the player towards feelings of joy and melancholy. As you progress through a level, the music seems to progress as well, to the point where it no longer really feels like artificial music, but a natural ambience of this fascinating world. Lead sound designer, Mike Niederquell, worked on Hohokam's sound effects and did an amazing job. It's truly remarkable just how, when navigating through these levels, the player simply gets lost in a myriad of sounds. Chimes, synths, bells, pops, clicks, and booms, each sound effect is used in interesting ways, but never overpowers the visuals. Mike Niederquell explains. So you notice some of the aesthetic throughout the game is, sometimes it's fairly simple and um, either quiet in the mix or just delicate, not a lot to it. Might not always even match the picture. Uh, we wanted to make sure we didn't pull away from the music and just tried to continue making the player have a pleasant experience. And this is a perfect example of that. I mean, you're interacting with things in very small moments. Even more interesting is how sounds were created and then inserted into the mix. That little guy was made with a balloon, performing a air leaving a balloon and 
inside my mouth, kind of vocoding it. I love the way these guys turned out. These these are just these are just kazoo's performing kazoo's. to unique, abstract, and ambiguous games, Hohokam rightfully deserves a spotlight be cast upon it. Utilizing some of the simplest mechanics, no real push for story or a laundry list of objectives to bog the player down, and boasting a mesmerizing soundtrack, it's all about escapism, feeling good, and just letting the shapes, the colors, the music carry you away into the deep recesses of Hohokam's world, and some would even argue into your own imagination. It's about engaging with its quirky looking characters, inventive and odd environments, and ultimately losing yourself in the moment as you curve to the left or to the right, bumping into objects and experiencing the unexpected results of your own spontaneity. A very huge thank you to Richard Hogg, who is simply the nicest guy ever. We were able to speak for about an hour where he shared his thoughts on Hohokam, a game he released five years ago. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer my questions. Also, a shout out and thank you to Mike Niederquell, whose behind the scenes video on Hohokam's sound design was very, very helpful. You can check out that video right here and check out Mike's other contributions to games you probably played and loved. We often forget how important sound is and Mike does an amazing job in all the games he's ever undertaken. Please check out his website right here. I'd also like to thank Anthony TRP and I'd like to point you to his YouTube channel where he uploads video game soundtracks which were pressed on vinyl. His channel has hundreds of videos where you can preview a vinyl record before even buying it. Go check it out right here. And of course, I want to thank you for watching. Please consider liking the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to watch more videos on these types of games. Leave a comment below, say hi, and let's have a conversation about this great game. Thank you again everyone, see you next time.